Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Morphe Auction House taking a look at a uh, registered full-auto transferable M14. But, as you might be suspecting from the underfolding weird stock, it gets cooler than that. This is actually a Harrington & Richardson experimental gorilla gun, which the previous owner put a standard pattern barrel and gas system on, because they wanted to shoot it with a regular stock instead of the experimental prototype underfolding stock. Uh, now the, the Gorilla Guns, H&R made a handful of these, and they made them between 1961 and 1963, or rather the development program was during those years. These guns were actually ready and submitted to the US military in 1963. The idea was to develop a shortened and lightened M14 that would be a little better suited to jungle conditions. Uh, originally this was actually done with uh, the country of Laos in mind, selling shortened M14s to Laos instead of the standard configuration guns that they were actually purchasing. And of course H&R was one of the prime contractors for military M14 rifles in the first place. So they had all the tooling set up to do this, and their Gorilla gun is actually completely interchangeable, parts interchangeable, with the standard M14, with the exception of the flash hider, the uh, gas block, and the barrel. So what they did was, well it's actually not that complicated, they shortened the the barrel down, they changed out the gas system. Most of these guns had standard stocks on them, but this particular one was actually outfitted with this H&R one-off underfolding stock as an experiment. And these were tested by the US military and they found them to be, uh, you know, we... no. We got standard M14s, that's fine, we don't want this thing. I suspect it had too much uh, flash and too much recoil to be uh, approved in US testing. And so H&R held on to these guns, and held on to them, and held on to them, and in late 1985 or early 1986 they actually went through the process of registering them with the ATF to make them transferable guns, because H&R was kind of on its last legs, and in 1986 they held a basically an auction sale to get rid of uh, company assets and raise some money, and they sold off a number of these now transferable M14s. There aren't a whole lot of M14s on the market, and so uh, these have turned into really collectible, scarce guns, uh, entirely aside from the Gorilla Gun connection. So let me go ahead and show you this barrel and this folding stock, because it's really... It's, it's a very different sort of thing for an M14. So we'll start with the markings back here. Um, obviously it's a US rifle M14 made by H&R, and then serial number on this one is X40. Uh, there are at least two other documented prototype Gorilla Guns, uh, X42 and X45. So that, that all, all makes sense. And this is quite well documented in the literature, um, officially from H&R. Now the selector switch on the M14 is this external latch. You push that in and rotate it 180 degrees, and when you can see A for auto, that means it's in full auto mode, and if we rotate it again it can go either direction. If it's blank that means semi-auto. And all that thing actually does, this is kind of like the M2 carbine full auto uh, setup, this is simply a trip lever so that the hammer doesn't follow uh, when the bolt goes forward. Instead the hammer stays cocked until the charging handle is all the way forward, which means the bolt is all locked, and then it pulls on this which, through the internal mechanism, trips the hammer and fires the gun again. So the barrel here, which we can take on or off of its gas block and retaining plate. This barrel is 15 and a half inches, which means it cut about five and a half inches off the length of the gun, uh, as well as apparently cutting two full pounds off the weight of the gun. Because in addition to cutting it down, they also turned the barrel down uh, back at the chamber end and did some other things to lighten weight. Well, they did that to lighten weight, because the receiver, the fire control parts, and everything else on this are stock M14. So by cutting off, you know, this much of the barrel, plus the flash hider, plus turning this down, they lost a substantial amount of weight. It is of course arguable whether a reduction in weight is actually a good thing for an M14 in full auto, but that's a separate issue. There was originally a flash hider uh, to go with this, and it was a kind of a unique looking one. It was a long, uh, a fairly long flash hider with a cone at the end and a whole bunch of vent holes uh, at the, in the front half. So the stock here is held in place by a little spring clip latch right there. When you go to open the stock, if you have a magazine installed, uh, this will fit around the magazine, but you have to depress this button 
and open the stock, like so. Then it can clear the magazine, and it's going to rotate all the way around here. When it gets in position, it will lock just like that. When you want to fold it, push that button in, right there, and then it rotates up or down. So the stock is held in place by a little latch here. That spring clip right there locks into the side of the strut, specifically that little cutout right there. Now, while this thing certainly makes the gun more compact and easier to carry around and easier to store, and I like the pistol grip on it, I'm dubious about the practical nature of this uh, butt pad. It is about three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch, inch less length of pull, so the whole gun at the back end is a little bit shorter, which is, to me, combining that with these two, uh, two struts on the stock, I don't think that's going to be a particularly comfortable thing to shoot. And I would say H&R probably didn't expect so either, given that while they made a bunch, well, a handful of Gorilla Gun prototypes, only one of them was outfitted with a stock like this. So I have never actually shot a full auto M14, and I would really like the opportunity to do so. And the consigner of this rifle thinks that it'd be pretty cool to see it shooting on film. So we are going to go ahead and take this out to the range tomorrow. Now, it has a standard barrel on it because I'm not going to change out the barrel. Uh, I think it would be extremely cool for whoever buys this rifle to swap out the barrel, but I'm not doing it for now. And I'm going to put the regular stock back on it because I don't want to risk damaging this before it goes to auction. So uh, I am going to do some shooting with this in the configuration of a standard M14, but of course after it sells the new owner will have uh, the original barrel and gas block, and I think it would be extremely cool of them to convert it back to uh, its original Gorilla Gun configuration, because those things are just really scarce and cool. So uh, if you would like to be that next owner and do that, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to Morphe, well, to ForgottenWeapons.com, and from there you can follow a link to Morphe's uh, catalog page for this rifle with its extra bits. You can see their description, their pictures, their value estimate, and everything else you would need to know if you're thinking about picking it up yourself. Thanks for watching.